Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. First off, um, I don't completely remember the opening credits. There wasn't a score, but that was okay because they had the most vicious jack o' lantern, jack -o -lan jack -o -lantern carving ever. Freaking quick cuts of just slashing and crap. Oh my god, I loved it. Then we get to Michael is shot in the mine, and they do a What's the word? I think retcon, but that, yeah, I think it's retcon. Retroactive continuity. They go back in time and change something. Or, well, not really. That's not only for this one as much as it is for Halloween 7 it'll be. But for this one, they do add something. Last time, we didn't really think he was dead, and that makes sense, because... But in this one, they freaking threw TNT. Why didn't they put that in the last movie? Who knows? Ridiculous. They add TNT this time, and Michael crawls out of it just in time to avoid the explosion, float down the river, and arrive at a hermit's shack or whatever, where he sleeps for a whole damn year. He awakens eventually and kills the hermit. God damn it. God damn it's right. But then basically after that, the, the plot is Jamie is in a... Smith's Grove or somewhere because she ha has lost the ability to speak and has a psychic connection with Michael. And then Michael ends up killing several people close to Jamie or whatever. A, a couple of kills I say belonged in more of a Friday the 13th movie and were in a Friday the 13th movie mm -hmm. very much earlier. And it ends with Michael getting tranquilized by Loomis in the Old Myers house after several brutal murders. Loomis has, I guess it was a stroke while beating him. Then Michael is taken to jail where a, a man in black has kept popping up in the movie every now and then and he shows up there, kills all the cops, kidnaps Jamie and takes Michael with them. And that's how you get to the point where... The Thorn. Yes. Halloween 6. Thorn. But we're on 5 now and let's get into this bull crap. And I'll admit, I actually enjoy this movie a little bit better than Halloween 4. This one had something that I'll just talk about now. My favorite thing in the whole movie is when Jamie is on the run from Michael in the house. It's very suspenseful in Master Chase. And it's best when she's in like the laundry chute. And he's trying to stab through and get her and stuff. That was intense to me. I, I thought that was the, only, the really good thing about this film. What are your opinions on that little chase? I found that to be the most... I always thought... I, every time that Michael was going to kill somebody, or was trying to kill somebody, I was always cheering for Michael, but that was the only one out of the whole series where I wanted the victim to make it alive. The whole thing, I'm like, Jesus Christ, is she going to make it, she going to make it, she going to make it. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> yeah, I know, that's the good scene. Okay, but then we get to it. Um, Jamie can't speak, and this kind of gave me a giggle. The nurse is like, do you want me to call your mom when she awakens her from the nightmare? Now, is she talking about Jamie Lee Curtis, who died in the car crash, or the mom that she shanked last year? <laughs> who knows? I, either way, that's a bad line. Do you want me to call your mom? I, I do wonder if the mom, like, I guess that means the mom still is like her foster mom, even though, oh... Just gutted me in the bathroom with scissors. Nothing major. I'll still watch out for you every time you have a bad dream. I'll be there for you. I'll drive all the way out to Smith's Grove to be there for you for every bad dream. You know, getting stabbed ain't no biggie. Forget that. That is a mom that cares. That's not like Lori's foster mom who's like, Don't talk to me like that. I'm not your mother. Let's go see your psycho brother now. I mean, that was ridiculous. Yeah. And then... Um, a little bit later, it's when Michael wakes up in the Hermit's thing, it reveals the thorn tattoo on his wrist. Mm -hmm. Not a thorn tattoo, birthmark. It was the thorn tattoo, it was that. It was this, and there's like an arrow. I don't believe it was a... It was the thorn tattoo, because that is the symbol of thorn in yes, number I six. Yes, I know, but it might have been a birth sign. Yeah, it might as well have been. It was either a tattoo, or he was born with it, or it burnt into his skin or something. Who knows, the thorn symbol's there, and I hate it. I hate where they took this. Last one, we're mad that Jamie isn't the killer, eh? Mm -hmm. There's, they should have had some balls and took it that way, because 
it's not like Halloween 3. Mustafa was like, remember Halloween 3? Remember? We tried to take it somewhere other than Michael. It doesn't work. Well, guess what? Taking it with Michael doesn't work either. Jamie's at least the same type of character. She's not exactly like Michael. And plus, you could have had still. Jamie. Like, you could have one more movie with Jamie and Michael, but it's like ten years later. You could have had Jamie kill Michael and still continue the series with a female Michael, basically. Yeah. You couldn't have just stopped there. And it would have been good, because you got fresh shit now. It's fresh, just having freshen good... it up. Yeah, freshen it up. It's like the trade-up from Pamela Voorhees to Jason. Yeah. Which back back then when they did that, I'm sure that seemed more logical here at this point. Oh, <laughs> Then um, eventually it's Rachel and Rachel's friend. I want to say Tina, but I don't know. Yeah. Whatever her name was. And then it was the other girl who I forget, the other dude. And then there was also Fonzie, except he looked like he was 32. Fonzie was dating the chick, 34-year-old, 17-year-old. And the 28-year-old, 17-year-old. They never get actors to fit the roles in yeah. this. But he was like a douche. Like, he wasn't cool he, at all. No. He was the most uncool Fonzie I ever. I love the way he died, though. Thank God. Oh, and they killed God. him off quick. Yeah. Like Michael like scratching the crap out of his car. Get the hell away from my car. Tunk in the head. fuck? And it fucking just goes swing, just murders him. Just stick right in the head. End him. Thank, I, I love Michael for that because that guy's a that guy's a major. I like what Michael did though. Goes in disguises himself. Oh, yeah, he was wearing that other mask, and the, the chick's like, Michael, Michael, because um the Fonzie's guy what, name was Michael. She's like kissing him, and he kind of looks her like. Arr. And then the cops, I I have I have mixed feelings about the cops. I love it and I hate it that every time they show up, there's those silly noises. I thought it was good enough humor because this movie was humorless in a way. And at least they were trying. But at the same time, it's like, come on. So I'm not exactly sure. I'll just say I was okay with it. In the barn, there was the kills with the pitchfork. First off, there's too much buildup with those freaking cats and stuff. I, yeah. I was annoyed. Oh. And then it's they're having sex in the hay. Michael grabs a pitchfork, stabs the one dude. That is total Jason. I I I want to say that would be Friday the Thirteenth Part Three. It might be one other than that, but I believe it is Part Three. And do you remember what Loomis said? What? He will kill J his family and anyone who protects. Yeah, those people weren't doing that. They were just, they were just fucking. The, he should have just left them alone. Like he he may he went out of his way to go kill him. Yeah. It's like, and that's, not, this isn't Michael's fuck. M.O. Michael's M.O. is to not pick up pitchforks and copy a murder Jason perpetrated almost ten years ago. Yeah. Jason beat him to it by so much. This, this is total Jason for his envy. Which is sad in a way because Jason, the original Friday the 13th, was written as a ripoff of Psycho and Halloween. And the tables are turned because Jason ended up being actually good. And Michael, Halloween one and on, just went down, 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 and like... Every now and then, like, age 20, the remake, or his little rise up, and then he's down and deader after every one. He got revived with age 20 and went completely deader than ever before. Revived with the remake, even deader. Like, damn. Like, Halloween, like, ugh. Like, for the Halloween, original the, thing. The, the remake of number one, they made him about a foot taller. They made and him. super strength. And and I got problems to pick with that because Rob Zombie, I want I don't want to say homage. I think he just straight ripped off the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake and the original. He like ripped off some stuff. Like there's homage, and then there's rip off. The way he did it, rip off. We'll get to that then. But anyway, Jason took Michael's fame and. Popularity and also Michael takes his MO. And then he kills the chick, and then I th thought of it kind of funny when the cops get pranked by the guy earlier when he has a mask on, and then and then Michael's leaving with the pitchfork, and the cops are like, hey, someone's gonna get hurt with that. So it's funny, it's again mixed identity. I kind of like that. That was kind of playful in a way. But also, the scythe, he kills the chick with the scythe. Yeah. 
would that be Jason's ammo? Because I don't think Jason would pick up a scythe. That's kind of like... That's nobody's well, ammo. That's like, straight, don't do it. Well, it's... He kind of did it in one way, because, like, when he gets revived, when this guy's going to stab him with that spear in it... Part like, six? It, yeah. It kind of does that, because he brought the spear with him for, like, a long time. Yeah. A little while, and, like, yeah, I guess the sights would kind of work into that. Both kind of staff type things. I bought that movie. Part six. I watched it a while ago, so I remember it very fondly now. But, um... Yeah, the sight, if anything, I'm going to throw out, um, if you know it, sure, but the reference, Jeff Fahey in Maniacs, he killed a, he cut off a guy's hand with a scythe. If you've seen Maniacs, you remember. I'm not sure if you have. It's quite good. I'll, I'll show you the trailer or whatever later. It attracts my tears. It's a pretty good movie. But then we get to, I guess, the big setup in the house, Loomis set. Gets all the protection, got, like leaves one cop with a shotgun, everyone else, army, swamp, whatever you are, get out of the house, so I'm going to take him out myself. Nope. Freaking the middle. Freaking on the run and stuff. Oh, um, forgot to mention Rachel got killed in this early yeah. on, too. Lois Picker from last one, she just gets killed. Yep, they keep her around for one movie and then they just murder. Michael's like, you know what? One movie's long enough for you, miss. <laughs> Instead, we'll just have your weird friend. And she was pretty weird. She was like manic. She was all over the place. Yeah. And then the laundry shoot is intense. Yes, Loomis has his stroke. Then we get to the man in black, I guess, shooting all the cops in the station, busting them out and stuff. Ah, the man in black, black popped up every now and then. I just got problems with it, but no, like, this movie is superior to four, superior to. Three. Definitely superior to three. It's kind of weird, like having one awesome, two is lower, three is lower, four is lower, but then five kind of brought it up slightly, like it's not even a revival, it's just like slightly better sequel, and then six brings it back to where it should have been. It's like H twenty. It's, it's like can I make a flow chart? I'll I'll like I'll put a flow chart up if I can make one and then we'll see. Here's the flow chart. Number one. Two. Three. Four, five, five, six, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and one flow chart. <laughs> and then by the time Halloween 3D comes out, assuming, I believe it's Todd Farmer writing it, the guy who made My Bloody Valentine, Jason X, and The Messengers, that means, that gives me slight hope, because Jason X was funny in a way, because there were, but it, wasn't it was a satire in a way of sci-fi, but at the same time, it's a bad movie. So, if I were to make an I assumption, didn't... Halloween 3D goes, <laughs> or it just goes down slightly. It's I, like, I no way. It's, it's I, good. I think it may be very. Good I think key. it's gonna go rock bottom, and nothing's gonna be able to revive it. That movie will only be good for. I don't even know, cause Michael. I don't think he's one time to have a 3D villain type thing. It's a lot of bringing the knife down towards the audience. Yeah, I'm unless sure. they did like the, um, like the. J uh, Halloween 1, the remake, when they have, like, a bunch of fucking things, like, falling out at you all the time, like, oh, yeah. when he goes and kills the, kills the dude in, in the back alley, and it puts him into the strip club thing, and he falls down, unless it was like that, I don't think it's gonna be very scary. Like, I remember Halloween, the remake, when he throws the TV on J Danny Trejo, like, something like that, where, like, he's tossing stuff on people. But it, I, I would assume it's just a lot of him bringing the knife down at you from, like, point of view. Yeah, I was like, you, you have to look up and bend but down. But this series is running scared. It's running it's running scared for Friday the 13th. Who's, who, who, who's a straight copycat of this? Basically. So that's sad in a way, but at the same time, I, I don't care. Because I like Jason a lot more than Michael. Because Jason, as much as he's a ripoff, he took it, made it his own in a way. And then freaking... And then... It basically became the pop culture icon yeah. that we love, and then Michael kind of kept his shtick, and then kind of tried to uh, catch one, back up to the copycat in a way it made itself awful. Yeah, like the overkill in number one and two, the remakes. The remakes, that is, uh, yeah. That's something else. So that's Rob that's, Zombie's. That's Rob Zombie's directing aesthetic. Yeah, that's just bad. We'll get to that. Oh. Like, <sighs> fucking just trying to. Break everything in a ball. He basically with a knife. It's really Rob Zombie's directing aesthetic of 
he'll always show you everything. He'll show you every bone break. He'll show you every single stab. He'll nothing he'll can let, be he'll ambiguous. He'll make you hear every break in a spine. Like he, he's the opposite of John Carpenter. Yeah. John Carpenter liked to do a lot of in the original Halloween. He liked some ambi ambiguousness or whatever. And Rob Zombie, the closest he came was Halloween to the sequel where. I, it was Annie's death, and they left it ambiguous, but then he's like, no, I must show it. So he went back, and they show her death in flashback. It's like, and even in the original, when Annie gets attacked, they linger outside the house, but then they just cut back to it later anyway and stuff, and it's, ugh. He, he's very seldom to be a ambiguous. I, like, there might have been one time, and I don't even remember. I'm just saying there might have been, because I have hope that maybe at least once. Mm -hmm. But enough about zombie. We're not getting to him for a while. This movie? I would have to say, I guess I could recommend this one a lot more than the other one. I'll recommend it to the Michael Diehard fans, obviously the completists, and I guess if you're okay with the standard slasher film that has flaws, okay. A very, very weak recommend, and I would give it a rating of a D plus. Or no, not even. I'll put it... What did I say Halloween 4 was? Was it a D plus? Yes, just because uh, you're cutting it some slack, I believe. Yeah. So I guess this one would be... I don't want to give this one C minus because that seems like too much slack. So this one also it. gets D plus. Yeah. It's superior, but not enough to make its way into the C's. And you recommend a rating? Uh, my, I would recommend it basically the same guy as he would, but my rating is a little bit higher with like maybe a 7.5. Mm, okay. Join us next time when we get a thorn in our side for Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. <gasps> Again, you like swallowing the camera. I don't get it. <laughs> you turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> this is Wooly by Mom. What do you want me to do about it, Henry? Yeah. Patrick, I heard you're coming up on Winnipeg on bike. You better freaking kick his ass. Fuck! <laughs> that would suck ass. You know, your tube's not gonna help you talk good about it, right? Yeah, I'll cut it. That's out. a good thing. I should fix MJ that. MJ Elvis uh, among the dead, richest dead celebrities. Ugh. <laughs> Just go to Hanson and have a new man. I don't care.